Surf's up. I'm making an IGL tier list based off of what we just saw at the PGL Major. Yes, I'm doing this live on Twitch chat, so be sure to tune in to the streams whenever I do those. And yeah, we're going to cut this up, okay. But I'm going to be working a little bit with Twitch chat, but this is still my analysis at the end of the day. So the first thing you have to do, obviously, when you make a kind of tier list like this is you need a rubric. When I think of a rubric for IGLs, I think of what am I going to value highest, okay? Obviously, the calling. Something that people don't actually always include in these kinds of lists, but is very important, is your actual in-game ability. Your actual in-game... Like, the part of being an in-game leader is being in the game as a player. How are you contributing? And, that, and the way that I also see this is that you're doing it with your ability of above a replacement. Because, say, for example, you have somebody that's an opera IGL for a team, but is putting up a 1.01 rating. You might think in the context of all IGLs, well, look at he's got a 1.01. Like, that's better than other in-game leaders. His fragging's really good. I'm saying it above a replacement. And an average opera at Tier 1 shouldn't have a 1.0 rating. So he's actually, so I would actually rate him fairly lowly for his in-game ability because he's he's hurting the team. <laughs> he shouldn't be probably opping for this team. And if he were just a rifler with a 0.88, that's a hindrance. And so if he were a good opper, and I'll get to that too, then we're going to, yeah, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> RIP Fallen, probably, yeah. So... Um, I think vetoing is also important. Vetoing slash game planning. I put those in the same category. And I'd say in order from most to least important, I would go this. I'd probably go here. Uh, I'd actually maybe go here. And I'd say that the most important with... Let's do this, actually. 50, 25, 20. There we go. That's better. We kind of have to keep this in mind. I'm not going to keep showing this on the screen, but this is the rubric for grading these people. 50% is your calling ability. 25% is your veto game plan ability. This actually has something to do with your coach. So coach tandems might get might boost an in-game leader, but we can't always tell who's helping in what, what capacity. In-game ability above replacement. And then 5% captain leadership. That's just how good you are as a leader. And that's kind of the most nebulous thing. Like aura, that's kind of like aura. Aura is your ability to be a captain. That's aura. And uh, there. So we're going to move through some of these IGLs and where they ended up at this major. This is, by the way, current form. Current form. I'm not thinking about the history of this player. I'm thinking who it is today. So... Something that can we can include stats with these kinds of things also is we actually can think about just flat out T side win percentage and the players they have on their team and how much that exceeds their win percentage based off of, okay, wait, you have these players of this skill level. How good are you actually performing? So I'm going to look at 20 and also so basically 2024 ranking filter is top 30 using FTU stats T sides because CT sides are important, but they're a little bit more individually driven. Wow. There's already some interesting stuff here, guys. There is already some really interesting stuff here. Ver so, Meta's port, they're not playing the same level of competition. So, the percentage is very high. That being said, I would have rated ZTR very high. I would have rated him high. Um, very low. Bet boom. Bet boom. It's almost like I knew. It's almost like I knew. Almost like I had these ideas that I praise ZTR a lot, and then maybe I had made an enemy in the scene for a good reason. Okay, so moving on from that. Okay, guys, you have to have to, to kick off tier list, and you need these foundational elements. You need foundational elements to to establish yourself, and so that you can build and work from there. We're putting him in F. We're putting him in F. He has been an anti-in-game leader for such a long time now that he had such exceptionally strong players. And there was a reason that I was willing to have such a strong case against him. I wanted other people to be, to be in his position for Cloud9 for such a long time. And even with a new lineup, he's got free reign, should be... 
should definitely be a player that is finding more. Like, a lot of people looked at that Bet Boom lineup and they immediately were like, wow, we got Chiron. Got some really up and coming talent. We know that he's really good. We got Zorte. J Jerry made that guy look like a star. He made him look real good. And then we got some up and comers that we weren't really too sure about. Sure, Dennis didn't really work out for the team. That's fair to say. But all in all, a team, a team of that, like a lot of people were really excited about that. And really, if you look at the results of that team, there's not much to work with. Siren 2. Siren 2 was a player that Chopper made look like, wow, this guy's a really solid anchor. He could really, he could really hang with the best of them. But they're not even making it through open qualifiers at this point. They bombed out of the Euro IEM Dallas Europe open qualifier. They didn't make it through the RM they didn't make it through the RMR. They played the last chance qualifier. They were they they lost actually to at the at the RMR, like the biggest thing for Bet Boom so far, they lost 2-0, 13-4, and 13-10 against Ancient. You want the stats on this? You want the numbers? Here you go. On their map pick of overpass, they got four rounds. Actually, you know what? Let's look at the RMR itself and how their stats were on this one. Player or uh team stats. FTU, T side. It, watch watch it be good. Watch it be good. Oh, wow. Uh 46%. 46%. Yeah. Kind of middle of the road, but wow. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. We got the F. We got the F here. Now we need the other side of the coin. We need the other side of the coin. Someone that deserves an S tier. Okay. Someone that deserves an S tier. And there's a guy right now who sure he doesn't win everything. But he has consistently brought his team to the grand finals of every single CS2 LAN. It's obvious. It's clear. It's Kerrigan. S tier Kerrigan. Okay? Kerrigan right now is the best in-game leader, and you would want him over anybody. Anybody. I know what just happened at the Major, but you would want him over anybody if you were building a team. And one reason I can say that, with certainty, with certainty, we are using fairly recent form, but I have seen Kerrigan do it with Robin. I've seen Kerrigan win a Grand Slam with Robin, but I've also seen Kerrigan win a whole ass major with a manager. He had a manager behind him. He had Coach Eddie behind him, who should be respected. Coach Eddie for the vibe should be respected, but he was the coach of them. He didn't need... A a coach. He didn't need a coach. He actually did it with Eddie. And so for that, and now he's doing it with Neo. And Neo is just getting started. I know that Neo is actually contributing quite a bit to FaZe. I talked to them at the Blast World Finals. We got we got some beers after that event. But I know I know he's getting some help. But Kerrigan could do it on his own. We've seen him do it with a multitude of lineups. We know that you put any single constellation together and Kerrigan can make them a top team. Give him just a couple months. Give him a few months. Even when he's he's got some weaker pieces, even if he's got some some people that are probably on their way out the door, he can still make it happen. He's done it with Mouse. He's done it with FaZe. He's looked good in so many different ways. Mouse 2019, never forget that. And now we need someone in the C tier, okay? We need someone that's like BAM average. Someone that is probably doing a good job with the pieces that he's got. And I'm going to say, this is, this is actually probably a, a I'm going to actually rate this guy in a way that I think he's probably one of the most polarizing figures in the space. I think that some of my constituents, my colleagues, would have nothing but hurtful things to say about this guy. But I actually think that he's done a couple things that have really uh, really lifted the team up and, and brought this team and organization trophies when they never had him. I'm actually giving Hooksy a C. I'm giving Hooksy a C. I, I, he hasn't won a major. He's had some big blunders. But man, they've won. They've, done, they've actually won some games. They've won some tournaments. They've won Cato. They won Cologne. And actually, you know what? When we think back to some of these, these things, how would I rate him? Calling? At, at some point in time, they were one of the best Inferno T-side teams in the world. They were literally, they were the best T-side Inferno team in the world. They were, they were creating the major. They were creating, they were creating a winning formula for, for how to play that map. I thought this was recent for Maui, you fraud. Hey, they won their quarterfinal game versus Maus. They won their quarterfinal game versus Maus. I think Maus were probably choking a little bit there. But I, I I will say that the calling wasn't bad. The macro elements weren't necessarily that terrible. 
Veto game plan is where I would, this is where I dock him the most, okay? This is where I dock him the most, and I'm saying it's a tandem. I'm not letting Hooksy off the hook here because Taz said, oh, I came up with the veto. Taz, why the hell are you coming up with the veto? You just got here. You just got here. Hooksy's been playing with this team for a year and a half. Two years. I, why are you coming up with the veto at all? And that's why I include veto game plan with the coach. Because Taz didn't lay it down to Hooksy. There's no world. I don't care what they said in the doc, in the little post-plant segment with G2 where they filmed and Hooksy was for some reason the interviewer in that thing. I don't care if Taz says, I take responsibility for the veto. Hooksy co-signed it. It's not... Taz did not rule that team with an iron fist. If anything, it is the coach and IGL that should be coming up with it. And you know what? If Hooksy didn't come up with it, that's that too can be a knock against him, okay? If Hooksy's like, nope, you're, you're right, Taz. You're right, Taz. Let's not play Inferno, which is our best map in a game we are the favorites over Navi. Then I too think that is a bad... I think that's a bad level of, of leading. So he has points against him, but I think that the calling is, is all right. In-game ability... You know what? What's crazy about this, guys? Hooksy actually has not been as bad of a fragger lately. You actually look at some of his numbers. You you see him in the game, and it's it's not that bad. Like that's why he actually can get a C here. His overall like lifetime form has been pretty bad. You look at what he did at the major though, and you relate that to a bunch of in-game leaders that are going to be here. And he had a overall rating for playing horrible roles, 0.96. He had better individual stat, and he actually went to the semifinals, okay? That's not bad at all. 0.96 rating. He had better stats than Ema. He had better stats than Floppy. He had better stats than Phelps. He had much better stats than Shuhei. He had much better stats than Alexi. So, in-game ability, not bad. Not that bad. Okay, now that we got our baseline people, now we can work. Now we can use this framework to grade all of these other in-game leaders. We're going we're gonna to just move through this. We're going to move through this pretty pretty simply. In fact, I actually want to get through... We'll, we'll kind of just go a little randomly here. Okay, we've got Muterus from Saw. This team, they look good online. They actually seem to call some pretty good games online. Uh, I'm not really... Saw, Saw sort of came up on the scene lately. They made it through the RMR. They actually beat Cloud9 in the showdown. And for, for Muterus... Right now, he's not very polarizing. We just haven't seen enough footage. I haven't seen enough footage of him. But all I can say is that from the games that Saw have played, I definitely, I really do see that. I I do think that Saw can be a better team, but it's it actually sometimes comes down to people like in, some individuals. I actually, I mean, you've got you've got certain sides of the Saw team which are like probably overperforming for some of from some of their abilities and you have some people that are underperforming roman is a critically critically flawed player he is critically flawed but then when you have people like you jerks who popped off you have erosdos who popped off story for me the jury's still out on story but you jerks and erosdos have caught my attention lately as individuals but roman he's just kind of doing his job and muterus as an individual himself he's been okay actually his individual form isn't that bad so this seems a little bit, little limp, but I would pro probably put Muterus right there with Hooksy right now. I put him right there. He's working with what he's got. It's probably they're reaching the kind of performances that I, that I, that I think they should be. Um, I almost feel like he's getting a little bit more out of some of his players, and it's been t it's been legitimately tough for me to tell. Are, are some of his players like U Jerks and Arizos succeeding because of the system, or are they succeeding because of individuals? Art, 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 art. Art, art, art. Arf, arf, arf. Oh, my. Um, yeah, there's nothing good to say about this guy lately. There is nothing good to say at all. Art has been tremendously detrimental to Furia and their their runs at tournaments. Uh, In-game ability is actually... Let's look back at this, guys. Calling, it's not been great. Not, not, not been great. I think Vito and game plan is actually incredibly flawed like so incredibly flawed that i legitimately don't know what's going on there ever uh they just kind of know what they pick and they just pick it in game ability this is i i actually think there is no even though even though in terms of pure stats for the last three months art has a 1.00 rating i am going to say that the in game ability of art is he's almost hurting himself he is legitimately hurting himself he buys mp9s on rounds 
where there where he should be saving with the team he dies with the mp9 he dies to the bomb with an mp9 and, and in terms of leadership i haven't seen anything lately i haven't seen anything that has brought the team above that i don't think the vetoing has been good either i mean i've just been everything here is flawed completely art you, you we used to be mutuals on twitter you've blocked me since then i don't know what i had to say then but i'll give you something to block me over you are you are assertively definitively unequivocally in the f tier you are beneath nafany you are getting actually less out of your pieces than nafany is in my opinion i am putting art if there were if i made a different tier entirely art would belong in it but i don't want to be i don't it doesn't need to happen doesn't need to happen art is the worst igl i think right now in tier one counter strike i actually don't think there's anybody worse legitimately i don't i can't i look at all of these faces i look at all of these names and i think to myself who is doing a worse job right now with the pieces that they have? It's just like th this team is basically cakewalking when they are better, when they have better individuals, and they are losing to every team that is even remotely close to them in terms of individual skill. And if we want to do Fallen as well, you know what's weird? I'm going to, this might be a little bit, a little bit unsuspecting, but if, if you, if you said tomorrow, Furia, you got to keep one of these guys. You're either going to keep all, Fallen on the op, but he will in game lead you, or you're going to keep Art. And you're going to get a better opper. I'm taking Fallen. I'm taking Fallen, guys. I'm taking Fallen all day. I'm for real taking Fallen all day. And I can't keep him in that same tier. If I were to build a team today, I wouldn't want either of these guys on my team. But he gets a D. Fallen gets a D. He's in the D tier. Still sometimes pulls out rounds out of his ass. Still sometimes is the reason that you beat teams like Saw in an elimination game because of his individual performance. Do not forget what's, what Fallen did to, to Saw. Do not forget that. That that was that was a rollback game for Fallen, okay? If anybody forgot, that was that was impressive stuff, okay? In the series versus Saw against Muteris, who we've already rated, Fallen, 1.68 rating, 22 op kills, was just flat out a monster. First kill differential plus five. 107 ADR, and, but he wasn't in-game leading. He wasn't in-game leading. That being said, Fallen knows how to call better than Art, okay? He knows how to call better than Art. I don't, I don't, even, it don't, I don't even need to see him calling today to know that he knows how to call better than Art. And that's why, and I know he knows how to call better than Afony. That's why he gets to the D tier, okay? We're not going to give him anything more than that. Is he worth his salary? Hell no. Is he worth the transfer fee? Hell no. Does he belong in F tier? hell no also okay he sometimes is the reason they do well 35 year old opera talent yes exactly chopper chopper has been sweet lately winning katavitsa individual ability very strong as well uh honestly chopper has done me some he's done some work for me in fantasy lately He's done some work okay he's done some great some great great things we saw a fatal flaw though in the veto against Kerrigan, against FaZe. Quarterfinal, you could have had it. You could have had Ancient. It was right there. That's a map you first, that's a map you first pick, Chopper. You, you first pick that all the time. And you went into the veto against FaZe, and you said, oh, we would rather play a map we know nothing about instead of playing a map that we like to first pick this was one of the most flawed vetoes chopper possibly could have pulled out to end his and spirits major run and phase by no stretch of the imagination called a great great game here on vertigo by no stretch a lot of just five man a hits spirit were kind of running their normal stuff on vertigo but it's not a great map for them we know it's their worst map of their maps right now vertigo is their sixth best Obviously, everybody knows that. Even though, obviously, they didn't show up here on Mirage, it's a map that they first picked. They beat a lot of top teams on it. Nuke is a team is a map that they beat FaZe on, even though FaZe looked pretty good on it throughout the tournament. And then they go for this. Spirit were picking Ancient in many of their series where they were unable to get Mirage. And they didn't go against FaZe on it because they wanted to punish in the second phase 
against FaZe. That was no pun intended. And it led to their own downfall. They put the pressure on themselves saying, hey, we're going to play our worst map in our pool versus a team that we know nothing about. And I think that is a fatal flaw in Chopper's game. And I think that I would have wanted, if he built off of the cattle beasts of performance, to put him in S tier. I cannot today say that. I cannot put him there. I am putting him in A tier. He is damn near close. If anything, Chopper will be at the top of A tier by the end of this. He will be... I do not see anybody slotting in this A tier and being above him. It's just not... It's not... Um, un it's unfortunate that a big moment got to him in terms of a veto that, that really sent him awry. Now, ZTR. ZTR. Metasport. This team has been really impressive in the tier 2 space. Metasport, their biggest scalp they took was against Falcons in the Blast Showdown. Unfortunately, just about everything that they're doing is online. I'm not really watching this team as much as I used to, uh, or DTR, that is, as much as I used to, but I do know that he was a big reason when he was slotted into NIP, NIP from Young Ninjas that they got a huge boost in their performance, and so I am going a little bit more off of historical data. I'm not watching as many Metasport things nowadays, but... In terms of close qualifiers, they're beating a lot of teams that are also even in the top 30. They've beaten, they've beaten Apex before. They've, yeah, like I said, they've beaten Falcons. They've beaten Monty. Uh, they are, they're not a bad team by any stretch of the imagination. ZTR, unfortunately, your in-game play has been, it's been very tough to watch. I, I think his individual form has lightly improved, but even when he was playing at that top level before, when he plays against top level opposition, man, he does fall off a cliff. I'm, I'm in between two things right now with ZTR. I'm either putting him kind of bottom B tier or the highest in C tier. I'm putting him there. I think I'm going to put him in B tier for now because what I have seen from Metasport in the limited games that I've watched of them has looked really good. They look way po more polished and above their years than I would have expected from a team of youngsters. So I'm going to say B tier right now. And a lot of that has to do with the Falcons win. A lot of that has to do with that. That one. Yep. That's that. Okay. We're putting him we're putting ZTR B tier. He's one for the future. He is definitely one one that I expect to see much more of very soon. And so I don't want to underrate him just yet. I don't want to put him in the C tier. I think he's I think he d is deserving and has proven more of that. Okay. Big dog on the space. Got Alexi B. Of all the in-game leaders left, there's one thing I gotta say. Best hair. Best hair slams the competition when it comes to hair okay alexi b not a single person holds a candle to his hair but that's not even what i'm here for that's not what i'm talking about we're talking about the rubric we're going back to the rubric calling excellent excellent calling throughout the major veto game planning maybe you give blade a little bit of that credit but they got a major trophy from it they got a major championship from it in game ability i would knock him i would knock him his in-game ability was horrible. One of the worst performers at the PGL Copenhagen Major. Just god-awful, in fact. Rating so bad, it's the only reason that it prevented Ema from being the worst player on his team. It's the only thing. But you can't argue with the other things. You can't argue with the calling. You can't argue with the veto game plan. You can't argue with the captain leadership right now. In-game ability, he actually did have a pop-off map versus FaZe. His first map against FaZe, goddamn. Damn, did he show up when he needed to, okay? Everything before then, just making sure that his pieces are in the right place, just like a good general. Alexi B is definitively S tier. You don't win a you don't win a major by accident. You don't win a major by accident. You don't have a long streak of great performances with underpowered teams. The one blight, the one real blight, as we all know, as Launders told us, your time on NIP does not count. But your time on G2 did count. And with Nico, with Monacy, it was a young Monacy. And with Hunter, you weren't able to find any trophies. In the historical conversation, maybe you're a little bit lower. Maybe you're just A tier. Maybe we rearrange the whole thing. But in terms of a more up-to-date form level of calling, you are S tier. You are vindicated, Alexi. You are. You are absolutely vindicated. You are in the S tier of in-game leaders. Now... Moving forward with snacks. Wow. When did this happen? When did snacks become an in-game leader? I think snacks and I, I think we're only two days apart in age. And we actually use the exact same sensitivity too. It's like we were born at the same time with the same exact hands. But for some reason, God made me better at speaking 
and they made Snacks a huge guy that is really good at fragging. I don't know what happened. Probably it's more about nurture versus nature, because I think by nature we might be the same person. I think we might be. How often do two people, how often are people born at the exact same time and use the exact same sensitivity? I, is, and in the exact same year. It's crazy. But God made me a talker and they made Snacks a caller. Actually, they didn't even make Snacks a caller. He's only recently taken it up. But the thing is, when we talk about Gamer Legion, we talk about what they've been accomplishing lately. I, I would say that they've been a pleasant surprise. When it comes to Snacks, it is clear that now Gamer Legion has more of an identity than when they were, when it was under Neelan, who was... I don't even want to say mid. I really don't even want to say that Gamer Legion were mid with Neelan. They were bad. They were just bad. I don't want to even don't don't give Neelan that credit. He didn't doesn't deserve it. Now they're kind of like mid. Now they're kind of mid. Now they're all right. Um, when it comes to snacks, I actually think that Gamer Legion are specialists. And that's why it's very hard to grade snacks. Because when it comes to overpass, they are sick. They are really good. When it comes to other maps, it's just not there yet. And so for me right now, snacks. In-game ability, very high. Veto game planning, it's kind of just the same plan every single time. So you kind of get a C for that. You can maybe even get a D. It's just, you're doing the same thing every single time. We know we know what you're going for. We know you're, we know that snacks, you're just going to go for overpass. And I don't really feel comfortable watching you on any other map. You're okay on nuke sometimes. But I can't really give snacks a great rating here. I think his in-game ability usually would elevate him to a point where I want to put him somewhere higher. But in terms of calling in veto game plan, it's not quite there. Uh, it's it's still a work in progress. That being said, the pieces that he's been using, um, what's what's kind of weird about it is that you look at the pieces he's been using and think of what Shuhei accomplished. And you have to go one for one on these things. Look at what Shuhei was able to accomplish with practically the same lineup. Sure, it's Ima for Volt, but we see that Ima might not even be that guy, that Shuhei made him that guy. And then Volt actually was pretty good. Actually, Volt's been one of their better performers on Game Religion. He might even be their best player. Him and Acor have been really solid. But then, Game Religion, they bench Kios. He just wasn't up to snuff. I, and I think that when it comes to snacks right now, he's kind of towing the line between C and D. I'm going to give him a C right now, uh, but the bottom of C. Depending on how many people end up in these categories, he might fall down to D. I can't put too many people there. So, I think that Snacks is kind of at the bottom of C. I just don't think that there's anything special yet about his calling. And as an as a player, I'll almost, actually, you know what? This is where I make the distinction. As a player right now, he's a C. But as an in-game leader, I actually have to put him D. I'm, I, I'm not too happy about that because I've seen some cool stuff from this team. But in very short bursts and only on certain maps. And when we're talking about Tier 1 Counter-Strike, it's got to be more than just one map. It really does. It really does have to be more than just one map that I can really rely on you on. Now, move to Nekas, okay? Nekas, leg Legacy, were pretty scary at the Major, okay? Nekas were... Pretty, I mean, in terms of what they did, taking down Apex, taking down Furia in a BO1, but then losing predictably to Cloud9 and Gamer Legion, and then also losing to Mongols. I, I'm, I just, I just can't really go too high on Nekas right now. Uh, wonderful guy, wonderful guy. The thing I always tell people about Nekas when I was playing North American FPL, as he plays North American FPL. There were games, because because he saw me pop off in a few FPL games, he always gave me an AK. He always gave me an AK. If we were on CT side, and he could pick up the AK, he'd always give me it. I'd always call him a gentleman. I think he's a great guy. That doesn't really move your stock up too highly, okay? There's some bias here. He's not in the F tier. He ain't in the F tier. They they did better than, hey, they did better than, uh, for the pieces that they had, did better than Naphany. Did better than Art. For for the pieces they had. They, they actually... Yeah, they beat they beat Furia. They beat Furia head to head with worse pieces. So there's no way I could have him as low as Art, but we're keeping him in the D tier comfortably. Device. Device, I've literally never seen you call. I've literally never seen you call. I know you're a good individual player, but I don't know what to talk. I don't know what I'm talking about here. I, I this is I'm sorry. Like there's nothing I can say. It's <clears throat> Device, in terms of individual ability right now as an opper, you're actually not even in the A tier right now. Okay, like, have you guys seen Device opping lately? I know we're, we've been giving him a pass for an awful long time. I, I, because it's Device's picture, I'm just going to put him here. The conversation probably should be a little bit more about Blame F. I can't really rate Device accurately. We just haven't seen anything. I have to put him F right now. We don't know what's going on. We kind of have to... We don't know. We don't know. We don't know... 
And so he fails for not even showing up. Since Apex is my least favorite team to watch in the top 30. I could watch any single team. I will, unless I am paid a day rate, unless I am paid a day rate by a major tournament organizer, I will not watch an Apex game. I have watched them enough. I have been paid enough to watch this team. Blast paid me to watch you guys. ESL paid me to watch you guys. When I am doing my own co-streams, I will not watch you. I think you are the worst to watch in Game Leader of everybody here. You are strictly in the bottom of the F tier. I cannot... I can watch a Bet Boom game. I know what they're doing. I know what they're doing. I know what they're doing. I know what they're about. I can watch a Furia game. At least it's entertaining. At least I'm going to have some fun with it. At least they're going to make some stupid plays that are going to make me laugh and cringe. Apex, you are sending five people in five different directions every single round. You have the worst trading percentage of every team, of every tournament you play. I will not, of my own accord, watch you anymore. Okay? I need to be paid. Okay? And I need to be paid a lot. A lot. A lot of money. Blitz. You know what? I'm going to say this. I wasn't quite familiar with your game. I didn't know what the Mongols were all about. But I have seen you guys consistently outperform teams you have no business beating. You are one of the few in-game leaders and teams who, despite how depleted your region is in terms of skill and good practice, is somehow coming out of it every single time and taking some heads. I am thoroughly impressed with Blitz. I am thoroughly impressed with your game. I am thoroughly impressed with what the Mongols are doing. And in terms of individual level, I'm very impressed. I am very impressed with you, Blitz. I am shocked that you are. You're taking down other people on this list. You're taking down Legacy. You're taking down Linvision. You're taking down Amcall. You're putting up good numbers too, goddammit. Okay? 1.08 rating at the major itself. 1.21 rating at the opening stage. God damn it, Blitz. You didn't even have the worst rating Blitz had in an 03 effort as an individual was a 0 0.98 on a single map against Pain. Okay? Blitz is the real deal. Mongols are the real deal. Blitz. You are on the rise, my friend. You are... Entering the B tier. Blitz, you are in that B tier. You're not quite there yet with Chopper and them. But what you have done with the pieces you've had, with the context, it's been impressive. In fact, hmm, ZTR or you above you? Because I am trying to order these. I am trying to order these. Ooh, I've just seen more. I've actually seen more. I've seen more from you. And I've seen it on land, goddammit. I've seen it on land. I've seen the Mongols take down some of these teams on land. Blitz, you are in the B tier. Exit. Unfortunately, your RMR did not go the way you wanted it to. Okay? Exit, you are... Exit, you you and MIBR actually don't have some bad pieces. As an individual, I actually rate you pretty highly, especially among domestic competition. But when it came to the RMR, where you needed to step up, you did as an individual, but your team didn't. You lost to Legacy. You lost to Legacy, and you lost to Boss. You lost to Boss. My guy, you lost to boss. You know who's on boss? You lost to Cryptic Freshy. Freshy, by the way, used to watch this stream all the time. Freshy used to watch this stream when I had when back in 2017 when I had 30 viewers. Freshy beat you. Okay? Freshy beat you. Darty, Darty Montana, Ponalone, Brett. Those names are almost memes. But you lost to them. And I want to rate you highly because I thought MIBR were good. I thought they were one of the teams that was going to make it, has a good chance to make it out of the arm. But on the biggest stage, you failed. And you failed spectacularly. And because it's recent form, and because, because the biggest stage where I watched you on, you did terribly, I'm sorry. But, like, your team should have made it out of that. Your team should have beat Legacy. Your team should have beat Legacy. You should have made it. Woody was a better call. Yeah. God damn it. I don't like putting so many people in the F tier right now. I feel mean. I feel hurtful. But if you don't even make it through, and there's no recent form to show, like, uh, is he that bad, though? Is he really that bad? Man, that team should have done better. I think individual... Okay, you know what? It's really bad, but I think it's bottom of D. I think it's bottom of D. Okay, I actually, I actually think he deserves bottom of D. I'm going to be a little bit more respectful to him. 
I've seen some good. I've seen some good with some bad. It's it's F, F I can't do F with with exit. It's 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 they should have beat Legacy, but they should have beat Boss, man. They should have beat Boss. I was happy for Boss at the time, but I'm not I felt I felt like MIBR were oh my god. Oh lord. Oh lord. It's the big boom. It's big boomage right there. Actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. We should get this a little bigger. All right. Big boom. The man himself, the man, the myth, the legend. God damn it. We've seen you at your lowest low and your highest high. And for some reason, you always put a smile on my face. But Big Boom. Whew. It's tough right now. You don't have the pieces to work with. But the one for one, you for Electronic, you for Naphany. Oh, it's been night and day. It's not even a question. It's not even a question. I'm going to say a couple things. When we talk about some of these things, calling ability, it's been strong. Cloud9 have looked damn good at times. Veto game planning, maybe not actually always the best in-game ability. God, he plays his role damn well. I might even overrate how well he plays it. But on certain maps with the AWP, my God, he is damn good. But Captain Leadership, oh my goodness. Did we see the attitude and mentality shift drastically once Boomich joined Cloud9? This is... This was a team that felt frustrated, where Shiro left it because they, he didn't know what the hell was going on. And now they have some really solid T sides. They're looking good. Like, this is this is legitimately a Boomich that came rejuvenated and with one of the best T sides at the Major 2. 56% with only a 43% opening kill. Okay, their trading is very good. Their 4v5s are okay. Their 5v4s are solid. Vital versus Vitality, they, they didn't stand a chance. They couldn't handle it. Okay, they couldn't handle it. Inferno, they actually did pretty well. They, they didn't have enough rounds to play with on Anubis here. They lost the pistol, so they didn't even really get to show their hand on that map. But they, they, they have some good T-sides, okay? They are not bad. There's only one question here with Boomich. Is he the top of A tier? Or is he the bottom of S tier? And trying to have a shred of objectivity. Trying to have a shred of objectivity. I saw Boomich make it to the major playoffs with a team that had no opper. With a groove coach that let Naphany call the way that he did for as long as he did. So I don't think he's got that help behind him. I think this is a lot of Boomich on, the, on that. And I'm going to say, if if you gave Boomich an opper, he's winning trophies. This is an S-tier team. This is an S-tier in-game leader. There is a reason that Launders thought that they were going to win the Major. Because when they are calling in their bag, Boomich is a great in-game leader. He is an excellent in-game leader. He doesn't mess up these vetoes. He doesn't mess up on big stages. He's calling it as he should. He is calling it as he should. If this, Literally, if this team had a consistent opera, they really could have won this major, okay? Betting websites of all the teams that were going through the opening stage, many of which listed Cloud9 as better chance to win the major than some of the teams that were already guaranteed the next stage. They had better... The Cloud9 there had better outright odds than many of the teams that were even in the next stage guaranteed. That is because people know that this team can power up, and if God, if they just, if they just hit the right series, if they just had, if they, if they hit the right series, they can call their way through anything. Their teamwork can go through anything. Big reason for that: the vibes that Boomich brings, his individual ability. God, he was actually a solid opera throughout a lot of this. And the reason that I actually want to put him in S is indiv individual ability. He out opt Zaiwu to make it to the major. He literally out opt Zaiwu. He. Sure, they lost on the big stage because Vitality were ready for them and Flames overperformed like crazy. But look at this one. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. Look at the amount of op kills. Who had the most op kills in this series? Big boom. Hey, big boom. Big boom. Neutralize. Neutralize. I think I think Zaiwu in this actually had uh, 10, 10 op kills. But you give this guy the right team and they're, they're, they are very capable of winning trophies. 
and I haven't seen him crack. Okay, and so maybe maybe people are looking at like, well, well, uh, you give you give Chopper the right team and he can win trophies too. I've seen him make I've seen him make quarterfinals with some pretty impressive teams. You know, that's pretty cool. But the big choke lately, it's right there. It's fresh. It's fresh. You did the you had the exact same placing as a Cloud9 team with no Opper, and you had Donk, and you had Shiro, and you weren't actually as a leader able to uplift Zontix out of his slump. Alex next, okay? This is a weird one, guys. I, I I didn't know what MIP were doing with this one. I would have rated Hampus higher, I'll, I'll be honest. Alex was okay for Movistar, but he was probably the third guy you would have taken on that team. I liked Mopaz more. I liked Sapias more. And uh, NIP, they didn't make it to the major. They never figured things out. Um, this is a solid D for me. I think Alex is actually a totally solid player. I think that one thing that's maybe hurting him a lot right now is that I know he speaks English well, but you're now doing internet you're now playing for an international roster and your teams have no cohesion at all. I think this is this could even be F. This is could could even be F actually. The only the only thing is is it F or D? And his individual ability is better than sense art and naphany. Yeah, he's definitely better as an individual. I mean, device, I just would give you a zero for calling ability right now. That's why you're an F, okay? It's a little bit of a it's a little harsh, hurtful, but that is where you are. Kixan. Kixan next up. I, I I also just don't have there's just frankly speaking, with, with NIP. Man, I mean, they just look so bad. I mean, they just look so bad as a whole. And then they just basically were like, we're gonna kick everybody. And so I also thought that roster was just so drastically flawed that I don't it's almost like it's almost like the launders thing your time on NIP doesn't count but you're still on NIP kick San. heroic overperformed like crazy I saw this team come together so much in the time from when they started the open qualifier to now I am very high on the future of heroic that being said that being said after the major and you lost JL you tanked everything was so bad uh, everything was very bad for 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 Apex. They looked like they were completely lost for a very long time. And at the beginning with Heroic, when they weren't playing with Saw, they looked lost for a while. Because during the qualifiers, let me remind you, during those open qualifiers, which they barely got through, they they are man, those games were damn ugly. Tessis didn't know, didn't look like he knew what he's doing. Nertz was actually not even performing that well as an individual. The best player for me was Shush and Nikoda. Shush and Nikodas were the best two people. And so, once they got back to the drawing board and said, Hey, Saw, can you help us figure things out? They did. They did. And so, that's why I know some people would probably rate Kixan incredibly highly right now, but I know that he's got one of the best coaches in the world behind him right now. If I have to rate coaches off the top of my head right now, and I'm looking at kind of the people in this area right now, I think the best coaches are probably Blade, Saw, Zonic. I have a hard time really giving anybody else a huge shout out here. Uh, I might even give Holly some kind of a boost here. Maybe Holly would be good uh, for for them. I think Neo is probably in my. We'll make a we'll make a separate tier list for coaches. Okay, we'll make a separate one. But that's why Kixan rates himself right there in the B tier. In fact, this might be a little too based. I'm gonna keep Blitz above him because I feel like the pieces. I feel like the pieces that Blitz is working with are actually weaker than Heroic's pieces. And I feel like Blitz has done so much that has made me so impressed with actually the calling and the style of that, that Mongols play. So um, I'm going to keep Kixan right there, right in the dead center. All of these guys, what's you know what's a common theme about these guys? All of them, probably bright futures ahead of them. Blitz, Kixan, as ETR, I can see them all being in that S tier one day. Boomich jumped the line. He got to play with Blade pretty early on. Got touched by the hand of God. Now, Vinny. I made the claim earlier. I made the claim earlier that Vinny is one of the top two in-game leaders in Brazil. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna make this a double whammy. I'm gonna move up. I'm gonna I'm gonna have uh Big Gazera next. Vinny, what you did with Imperial was goddamn impressive. I watched that Imperial team play at the RMR, and I I guess I wrongly assumed that. This is based off of individuals. Then I look back, look a little closer. Okay, actually, there's some teamwork here. There's some good trading. Actually, some good mid rounding. Okay, I actually think the calling's pretty good here. And I feel like the the boosts in performances from people like Henny, from No Way, from Decenty, from Phelps, might have propelled you guys a little higher than I would have thought. And I think that the form you guys found was very, very impressive. 
In fact, I'm going to put you... I'm going to put you in a pretty healthy spot right now. I'm going to... Hmm. Who would I rather have? I think Vinny, though, you might... Uh, let me see. What, let me, the, the losses... Uh, it's tough. I think the thing with that is that Vinny took two rookies in decency and no way up to up to a very high point at this major. A, a very impressive point where I... They, they didn't bomb out completely of the next stage. They were able... They basically took a roster that many people thought was like, oh, last dance, last dance. Oh, now it's not last dance. You guys are done. They beat Virtus Pro. They took a map off of FaZe. They beat Game Religion. They beat Apex. And they beat Ents. They beat Ents. Okay, that's impressive. They barely lost to Heroic in a super tight game. Ooh, it's tough. It's a little tough. It's a little tough. It's a little tough. Ugh, a little tough. I'm, I'm, I'm going here. I'm going, I'm going right here. I'm going here, Vinny. I'm going here. Uh, I think the one thing that I like about Vinny right now, and why why I'm I'm kind of torn between him and Muterus right here, is that he doesn't get the playing in Europe buff of getting to play against better competition as regularly, and yet him and Saw had very similar results at this event. And so I kind of I feel like it's one of those he's he brought in what what's very cool about Vinny's story is that Vinny was able to take what he learned from art. He separated the bad from the good. He kept the good. He, he got what he needed to from Fallen. Separated the bad from the good. He took the good from both of these guys. And he's actually made himself into a better leader than both of them. He is legitimately a better leader than both Art and Fallen at this point. Yep. So, Vinny's going to land right here. Him and Muterus for me, it's right next to each other. Hooksy is the top of C though, for sure for me. Now, Big Uzera. My god. My god, did everybody, was everybody just completely shocked by this? Everybody, I don't, there's not even a single person that you could say in terms of, so remember, I'll bring this back up again, calling, veto game plan, in-game ability, captain leadership. Flat out, there is no in-game leader here. Yeah, there is no in-game leader here in terms of in-game ability, above replacement, I'd rather have. He is the, he is the, he was incredible as an individual. L literally as an individual, absurdly good. Absurdly good and playing winning Counter-Strike, not just baiting for stats or anything like that. Super mega high tier impact constantly. And so, Pain, they did so, so much. They did so, so much. They were like, I, I think a lot of people had him as 3 continue to up find upset after upset after upset. Let me talk about the teams they... They beat out, they beat out recently, they beat out Ents 13 to 3. They beat Saw 2-0. They lost to Complexity and VP 13-9, both, both BO1s. They beat out the Mongols. They beat Heroic. They beat Heroic, okay? They beat Heroic and they beat Mongols. Guys, my hand's forced. My hand is forced. My hand is completely forced right now. You look at the players that Big Uzera had to work with and how far he got into this tournament. This is obvious, guys. This is very obvious. He's bare minimum A tier. He is bare minimum the A tier. There is no way he's even in the same tier as Blitz and Kicksam right now. He beat both of them with worse, with arguably worse pieces. Okay? And he was also the best player on his team through this. He lost Skulls. He actually said that Skulls has fault, faults in his game. He actually said, yeah, it's going to be hard to replace the aim of Skulls. But actually, you know what? Skulls didn't do a couple things for the team. And so, with you know, it's bad, but it's good. And he actually bit, did better. It's almost like Monty Boros, okay? It's like you lost a player that many people thought was, was their best player because Liquid got him. And my god, you just did better than when you had him. Like, what are we talking about? This guy's insane. Big Uzera is... In terms of valuable players in Brazil right now, Big Uzera is the most valuable player in Brazil. He is more valuable than Caserato because this guy knows how to lead young teammates to deep performances in a major. Sure, he didn't make playoffs, but my god, as an individual, he carried them in so many ways, in both calling and in both individual ability. He is right there in the A tier, for sure. He's one of the best in-game leaders in the world. It makes me very happy to say that he is one of the best in-game leaders in the world. Davi G. Um, there's not a lot to say here, man. There's not a lot to say here. Uh, you made it to the major. 
I, I I didn't think you would be as bad at the major as you were, but goddamn, when you played at that major, you were very hard to watch. Like, really, really uh, not, not great. But the thing is that I want to rate him higher than people that didn't make it to the major and that I don't find to be a complete eyesore watching. I'm going to put him right here, actually. Uh, I don't think he's, like, necessarily a great leader, so he'd fall behind Fallen. Uh, they didn't really win anything at all, so I put him behind Nekas and Snacks. I, yeah, I mean, he made it. It's it's not, guys, looking at his pieces, you, you know, he's working with Stadoto. He's working with, Mopaz is good, and it sometimes felt like, okay, actually, you know what, I will say. When I watch this team play, I don't like watching them that much. I think it's kind of the Mopaz show, and like, can anybody else help Mopaz, and is Mopaz even going to pop off? I don't necessarily think it's always based off of the most teamwork. Um, God, it's like... It's really hard for me to rate... Oh, actually, you know what? I might have to do beneath Alex. Because Alex was just flat out his in-game leader. And he they were better. <laughs> but he, but then again, Alex had better pieces than I would say that, um, that Davi G gets. Yeah, I'll put Alex above him. I'll put Alex above him. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll put... I'll do this. Yeah, that's that's where I'm landing on that. He's D tier. He's not F. He's not... Uh, he's not completely F because he made it to the major. That means, I mean, I know, I know Sense and Fear and Art technically made it to the major, but God, it's just, I, I have such strong biases against these guys. And maybe I haven't watched enough, maybe I haven't watched enough movie star writers to the new version of Koi, or the Koi writers, or whatever they are, to, to necessarily say for certain pff, that he's the worst caller of all time. I think if I watch more of them, I might have him in the Sense tier of completely unwatchable, but in what I, uh... I, I think he's just he's just right there at the bottom of D. Okay. Glaive. Big redemption story for this guy. Big, 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 big redemption story for Glaive. Uh huge, huge, huge performance at Katowice, getting themselves to the playoffs. Uh really and then also obviously qualifying to the major on top of that. I feel like what's nice about what Glaive has done with the core from nine is that he has turned that team into Big stage, big moment chokers uh, don't know how to really handle themselves in mid-late rounds to a team now that kind of has a weird dynamic where I feel like you could see the bones of the 9 team on maps like Vertigo really show up. But then when they play maps like Ancient, which 9 were really bad at, uh, that, that Glaive has now actually given them another dimension. So I actually think that Glaive today has, even though his team didn't do that well, he still is practically playing with rookies. Like a lot of these guys aren't very good. Uh, Hades is probably is definitely their best player, but we see these kind of like Kylar performances that get us kind of excited here and there. As an individual, I think the thing is I'm working off of individual performances, guys. And I, actually, Glaive did very well at Katowice as an individual. Um, that's where I actually bump his stock up a little bit. I feel like the major wasn't the best showing for him, but in basically a two prestige event sample size, which is kind of what I'm working with here. Glaive Glaive has actually shown some pretty nice signs. I would either say he's top of C tier right now or bottom of B tier. And I'm actually leaning a little bit more towards bottom of B tier because I just feel like what he did at Katowice was downright impressive. And I'm not going to forget that event despite the fact that they might have underperformed in the opening stage of the major. So I am going to give him B tier. I know he's helping this team. As a leader, he is absolutely... He has been the difference maker for this team. Mid-late rounds are just completely different from what 9 did. So I would say... I'm going to say B tier for, for Glaive right now. It's cool to see the redemption arc from him, and I'm I'm very, very happy for Glaive because I was getting kind of down on Glaive. The first signs that he showed with that Ents roster were pretty bad. They were, had the first worst 5v4 percentage of every team. Glaive told me, you know what, actually, here, a little bit of story time, guys. Um, I said so I said a line at, at the desk at the World Finals, and I, I said that, uh, you know, Glaive... What he's shown with this rogue team, it's not great. It's not great at all. Uh, worst 5v4 percentage throughout basically both events that they played. Uh, they, these te these players on his team just want to go other places already, even though can't really hate on Ents, but, like, you know, they all... I mean, can't hate on Ents because they went to Falcons and they went to Heroic for a lot of money. But they... But even... When you get a person like Glaive on your team, you would probably think maybe maybe one of them would rethink. Not not necessarily the Falcons money, but maybe Nurt's going to Heroic. But, you know, he still decided to join Heroic, still decided to stay with Saw. Glaive and Kubin didn't really co couldn't coerce him to stay. And I was pretty down on him. And Glaive actually, he actually talked to me. He's like, he's like, you know, I, you know he kind of told me some of the stuff behind the scenes about, like, the money, how he has a, didn't have a lot of time. And, you know, I was going to talk to him more in Kubin because we were, we were actually at, we were in... We were in Abu Dhabi. We were at, we were actually at the track where they do F1 racing. 
and we just both happened to be there at the same time. And he and he talked to me about this, and he's like, and we could have talked even more. And he's kind of like, I think what you said about me was a little bit unfair. And there was some more 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 words that were exchanged, but. He said, kind of like, when we wanted to talk more and kind of everybody started grouping up because there was like other talent were there, other players and stuff like that, other people growing up, grouping up, but like kind of had to leave it brief because he's like, we got to find a team today, by the way. We got to find a team within 72 hours. And so Glaive, he did that. He actually was able to take that core from nine. They basically just ripped them away from them and made it into a team that made playoffs of Cato. And I think that's a huge, huge accomplishment for a team that I think even if they made it to Cato as nine, I think they would have been maybe like, you expect them maybe win like one BO3 or something, maybe an opening round matchup, but if it's favorable, but not really any serious hopes. But I think what he did to Cato was um, like, there's something here on the, for the future. Okay. Patty and Ecstatic kind of just kept upending expectations. Um, I wouldn't really rate them that highly. Uh... I feel like for the ecstatic team in general, I'm gonna see who they who they beat right now. For for this team, so they beat Furia, but they got demolished by Cloud9. They lost to Mouse. They took a map versus G2 on Vertigo. It kind of started feeling like they were specialists on Vertigo and Nuke. And but then in the in the actual other stages. They beat Mongols, they beat Linvision, they beat Imperial. I think I have to just kind of put Patty in this meddling area um, where I, I feel like the pieces you have are, and you, the fact you get to play in Europe kind of, kind of slots you right around here for me, around the bottom of C, top of D. I think because you beat Imperial, and if I'm trying to use the one-to-one -one logic, it was a BO1 though. I don't really know if I can necessarily say for certain that Patty is, is going to be better than Vinny and who I want on a team right now. I think I'd rather take Vinny just for better leadership, better captain ability. Um, I mean, you lost a show match, so I'm going to actually have to put you down there. I think a real captain wins show matches like Kadian. So, um, yeah, that's where we're going to put him. We're going to put him. Put him. Now, I can't have too many people D. I just feel it's a too, little bit too mean. I think Ecstatic kind of proved themselves at this one. Uh, JT. JT. Obviously, everybody knows at this point that if I have to align myself with a certain fandom complexity, that would be my team. Uh, so full bias, full disclosure on that. But that being said, I, I've, I've, I've understood the flaws in JT's ability leading up to this. That being said, as an individual, JT has been really good. JT has actually shown a new face in CS2. If you actually look at JT and uh, the accomplishments though, not really where you want. Uh, you, you started off super hot in CS2 but now you've, you've definitely cooled off. If you actually look at JT's stats for all of CS2, he is currently sitting at a 0.98 rating. And so kind of that boost we got from CSGO, this is, this is what we're at right now. 0.98 rating, just barely, barely negative. But what's cool about JT is that he doesn't fall off. He's always going to do that. He's always going to do that. So actually in terms of individual form, like win above replacement, he's actually not bad. Some of the other people in CS2 that you'd probably uh, criticize for performances on his team... At the major, actually pretty good too. Like big reason that he was going toe to toe with Vitality, actually did held his own versus Phase, got demolished by Mouse. Let's get that out of the way. But actually, you know what? He beat out Heroic. He beat out Pain. And I was just singing the praises of Big Azera. I was singing the praises of Kixan. JT has actually made a team that he's only really got one superstar. He's got one. He's got one star player. He's got one big star in Elige. I think I think Elige has entered superstar territory for me. Individual performance is good for JT. Uh, JT has developed a lot in terms of his game. I've been focused a lot on the development there. It used to be a lot of out-of-spawn calls. Now the mid-rounding has clearly gotten better. I think that's part due in part to his maturity, him and TC. I feel like they're aware they're aware of their map pool sometimes, but sometimes they hold on to maybe a little bit too much of like, historically, we were always good at overpass, and I feel like they haven't always updated that, and it kind of hurts because I watch some of this stuff and I feel like oh, you guys are still getting really bopped on this map even and you haven't been doing well on it in terms of win rate. I get you guys think you have the principles to do well on overpass, but it hasn't been materializing. And I think that kind of knocks him down. He's, def he's definitely not A tier. He definitely has landed around B tier for me. I think the fact that he's beaten some of the teams that I've been singing praises of makes me want to rate him a little bit higher than Kixan. But if I, if I have to go in terms of current form... The thing, the problem with JT right now is you got a superstar. You do have a superstar. You have a liege. And so 
Nurts might be there, and and I think if in terms of overall players, if I actually rate heroic, you got Nika Dodds, you've got Nurts, Shush, Tessis, versus Elige, who is the best player of these ten on heroic and complexity. But then you've got Floppy, who's been performing pretty badly lately. Grim's not really been satisfying his role either. Halzerk's been really streaky, and so I have to say, I think I think JT's JT has actually made complexity a team that. I think I think people are a little more scared of, which is interesting, than say heroic. And that's due in part to Elige, but Elige actually didn't even do that well at the major, and they still were able to beat Heroic. And they still were able to beat a couple of those rosters. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna keep JT in the B tier until I see a little bit more. But with the pieces he's got, I think this is a very fair rating for him. So that's where he goes. That's where he belongs. Um, actually, he did well. He did well with Elige playing well versus Heroic, and they barely won that. Oh God, it's tough. It's tough. It is tough. It's really tough. Who's a better leader? Okay, okay. You know what? I'm consulting this. I'm consulting this. Calling. Damn, it's really even. Veto game plan. I actually think that. Kicksand has a little bit... Okay, actually, you know what? Player to player, Heroic do match up better than Complexity, but one thing I would take away from Kicksand, not that he he's not good on his... He is good on his own. He's good. Is that Kicksand has worked with two very good leaders consecutively, or coaches, Cuban and uh, Saw. JT is working with TC. I don't think TC is bad, but... He's never really shown that he's done anything else with another team. And so I'm actually going to have... I'm going to lower Kicksand stock just a little bit. I'm going to pump the brakes on him just a tad. Just because he's worked with better coaches. He's actually worked with better coaches. And so I think a lot of the game planning comes down more to JT. Hmm. Yeah. And I think that JT also has shown good... Yeah, I think that's a good point. That he's actually shown good resilience in a lot of big moments. I think they're right neck and neck, though. I think they're right neck and neck. It's really, really tough to do this. I think if I had to pick one to build a team around tomorrow, I'd have a really hard time. I think more people have rated Heroic and Kicksand a little higher lately. But, I mean, man, I mean, Jason Lake's throwing some money and, and extensions at, at uh, JT, too. So they're pretty happy with that. <clears throat> Snappy. This is probably one of the toughest ones. It's definitely one of the toughest ones, guys. Snappy is last year. Last year would have last year I would have put Snappy in, in the in the S tier or the A tier, A or S. It would have been one or the other pretty easily. The failure at the RMR is very bad, very bad. But that being said, guys, I rated Glay very highly because of the Cato performance and a Cato. Falcons got better and better and better and better. That being said, right now, Snappy has two things going for him that I've kind of just used to ding against Kicksand. He's worked with Zonic. He's working with Zonic, and they failed. He's working. He worked with Saw before that, and a lot of people praised praise him for that. I think Snappy has proven to me over time, and I, I'm not trying to use too much historical data. I'm really not. I really don't want to use too much. I don't want to go too far back because this isn't just a historical leader thing. He's shown so much that I have to have some good faith for Snappy here because I will say this, I wouldn't rate him below Hooksy. Okay? I can't rate him below Hooksy. So he's easily here at a bare minimum. The question is, do I want to put him in B tier or A tier? I cannot... In also good faith, rate him in A tier based off of the failure at the RMR. I know that people were mad about Boros, but a team is more than one player, and they 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 he would be the first to admit that too. He was the, they they admitted that in the vlog where they were bagging on Boros that it's that it is a team team effort, and so the failure at the RMR versus the achievement at Cato. And I think that one thing that goes for Glaive here is that the players that he Glaive worked with there to uh, to make it to the major are worse than the players that Snappy had to fail at that. Although they lost, they beat each other or they, they Falcons beat Ents there. That failure is weighs more to me because it 
because it shows a couple things. It's leadership ability. Um, you know, Snappy and Zonic together weren't able to put everybody in order to to pull it together. They instead, like we saw it, we saw the vlog. They bagged on Boros. I mean, they they tried bringing him up, but they brought him down at the same time. They didn't get the most out of him as they maybe could have. Uh, and I think that individual ability hasn't been great for uh, for Snappy either. And I. <sighs> This is a this is actually crazy, but I think I have to just be fair right now. I have to be fair. I I almost couldn't see a world where I actually couldn't see a world where I would have put Hooksy ever above Snappy. <sighs> God damn it! God damn it! God damn it! Why do you have to do it to me, Snappy? Why did you have to not qualify for the major, man? Why did you have to not qualify for the major? It's so bad. It's so bad that you didn't qualify. Like it's almost hard to put you anywhere. Even remotely decent, but you actually did very well at Cato, and I I do respect that. I do respect that a lot, but I can't have you above an in-game leader that made it to the semis of the major. I can't do that. I cannot do that. I actually can't do that. I, Hooksy is has to be above. He has to be above you. Although you got to the semis of Cato, you can't be above Hooksy, who actually got his team that far. Hooksy made a monumental failure to me in the veto with Taz. At the major. That being said, he got him there. He got him there. Like, they were... And they calling wasn't actually that bad. Like, it wasn't like, oh my god, the mid-round room was so bad here that Hooksy... I have to blame Hooksy because the call was just terrible. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. And the thing is that Monacy and James PC got him there. That's something I would actually kind of hold against Hooksy too. And I would kind of think about that. But Snappy to me, if I'm, if I'm picking an IGL today... Uh, I would probably rate Snappy pretty high. I would actually rate him higher than this, but man, that that RMR collapse was just that's uh, it's hard to fathom. It's hard to really rate you fairly. Um, okay, Shuhei, one for the, one of the greats, one of the next up. Um, the thing about Shuhei right now is that he has brought together a. He has now shown in two consecutive majors that he has made the playoffs of. He made it to the grand finals of one. So Shuhei, twenty one years old. 21 years old. Events. Top four Cato. Top four Cato. Playoffs of a major. Grand finals of another major. With a weaker lineup, arguably. Shuhei, you've been a master. You've been a god. You've been you've done the unthinkable. You brought Kios Ema. You got you got Ema the Navi bag. You made Acor look like a grade A opera. You made Torzi look like somebody that was clueless washed no chance of this guy succeeding in tier one with dexter into oh my god i would take this guy over brokey oh my goodness i am i am incredibly high on shuhei i am incredibly high on shuhei i think that he will achieve absolute greatness one day trophy cabinet's a little thin right now but he's only 21 he's only really been in the tier one for very limited amount of time. I wouldn't even really consider a Gamer Legion to be a Tier 1 team until he made them a Tier 1 team. He brought a team that was irrelevant into relevancy. Nobody cared about Gamer Legion. Nobody, not one of you, was watching Gamer Legion games more than once every blue moon because you randomly bet against them, okay? But Shuhei made that happen. And for that reason, and Shuhei has made Mao's he has turned them from a farm team into a legit title contender. Title contender. And you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. What he did with Gamer Legion was that he brought them into relevancy. Of course, it took him some time. Okay, he got them to their first major at Rio, but he also got them to the grand finals of the Paris major. I'm, mo I'm That is historical data. That is, that is. And we're trying to use recent form. What is recent form? Playoffs of the most recent major. Top four at Katowice. If I'm ta taking the two prestige events of the year, Shuhei has done nothing but deliver in them. Okay? And he has done it with arguably weaker pieces than somebody like, like Chopper. Chopper has the best player in the world right now in Donk. Maybe you could argue it's Monacy. Chopper has a top two player in Monacy. He is a top three opper in Shiro, as many, many would consider that. I don't think there's really anybody else that you would say is like, I mean, top five, bare minimum, top five, bare minimum for Shiro. Who does Torzi have? Who does, who, who is Torzi in this list for a lot of people? Where's his S tier trophy? He's got, he got a pro league. He won a pro league. I mean, it's not, you wouldn't say it's prestige, but it's S tier. 
Shuhei right there with Chopper for me. A tier, A tier, A tier. And see, and there's there's some what ifs. There's some what ifs here. What if you gave Shuhei, who's even the weak piece right now for Mouse? That's the question. Who's the weak piece? You could maybe find a slight upgrade, but everybody right now is very, very strong in their roles. Oh, is it S actually? It might be S. It might be S. Ooh, it's really close actually. But Shuhei elevates players though. Shuhei has elevated some people. Chopper, I'm actually going this. I'm doing this. S. S. S tier. S tier. S tier. S tier. Oh, it's tough. Oh, it's tough. I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking. The YouTube, I'm gonna I might edit this part. I'm thinking. S tier, A tier. Let me let me look at the let me look at the rubric. I gotta consult the rubric. Calling. Oh, he's very good. Very good caller. Veto game plan. I'll say this actually. You know what, guys? A, 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 A. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why A. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why A. A, A for one reason. Um, studio environments. Mao's our top three team in the world. Stages. They don't have it right now. Stages. Stages. He led he led Gamer Legion onto a miracle run to a big stage and deep. But um but uh at the recent performances at Katowice, God did they bomb versus phase. They did terribly. Against G2. They did not even join that server, man. They didn't join the server. It was not it was the least of the quarterfinal matches, guys, of the major. It was the least entertaining. I, I think maybe that or Navi, but but I didn't think we knew what the Navi run would look like. Let's look back at this. Look at these games. This was a banger. This was the most entertaining. Vitality Cloud Nine. Actually, that was that was pretty bad too. I'm gonna be honest with you. That was pretty bad. That was actually weirdly kind of sneakily entertaining between EF and Navi. That was closer than it should have been. G2 Mouse, dude. This was not entertaining at all. But but you look at the form that some of his players were in going to into that one and how badly they played. It, it's not it's not just his fault. But he couldn't do anything to improve it, okay? The thing, and the thing is, and the reason, guys, okay. So some people might be like, well, what about the distinction between Boomich and, and Shuhei right now? They got to the same place in that tournament, exact same spot, and Cloud9 doesn't have an opera. They do not even have an opera. To be getting that far without that role and having Boomich to do it himself and be one of the better oppers even at the event is crazy. That's why the win above replacement is very high for Boomich. Whereas Shuhei, mm, not that great. Not that great. Not that great. The difference for me right now with, say, Boomich and Shuhei, and why... I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. It's okay. It's okay. I'm telling myself it's okay, so it's okay. There's an A-plus category that had to be unlocked here. It's done. I hate that I have to differentiate to this level. But we're doing plus. We're doing A plus. And that is it. I am not adding any more tiers. Uh, C's with nine pandas. I actually thought this team played kind of well, but they also only really got in because of glowing. I'm going to put them in the D tier, like around here. Uh, you made it to the major. That's your accomplishment. But right now, I'm not really convinced with nine pandas. I, I, I don't see better than Fallen. No, yeah, Fallen's better. Fallen's actually... I would, I would, I would take Fallen over C's today. Yeah. Um... I uh, I have not seen an Aurora game for over three months, so I can't rate them. Jame. Jame. Oh, God, Jame. Why, why, oh, why did you put yourself in a winning position against... You put yourself in a winning position against G2, and your NVIDIA drivers had to crash. You can win a tournament. You can also lose in weird ways. <sighs> Let's see. Ah, uh, bringing some stuff up here. Match history, VP, lost to EF. I'm gonna say, guys, that one hurts the. You can't put JMS, guys. You cannot put JM in the S tier. The question really is that remains: is he is he A or? Where in A is he? He's in A. Okay, he's in A. He's in A. He's definitely in A. Uh, 
They lost at the Cato play-in, guys. They lost here to Gamer Legion and Cloud9. Like this is all I'm I'm including these form this form too, guys. I mean I know I know that I put Boomich here, but this is without an opper. This is without an opper. He did all of this stuff, okay? James has an opper. It's himself. I think of it like this. If you put James in for say think of it like this. If you gave James Donk Zontix magics you had him in and let's just take someone else from uh from vp and bring him over let's bring him in let's bring in like for chopper let's bring in like a uh let's bring in i can't bring i can't give him norbert because then that team would win every trophy uh but let's give him uh uh not mirror he's kind of the weakest i guess fame if you gave him fame or flit uh the team would be a monstrous team that team would be disgusting because you're not even you're dropping off a little bit, James for Shiro. Don't get me wrong, Shiro's better. Shiro is better as an opper, but James actually has shown his nerve better in big moments. He's a better leader. He's a better leader than Chopper for me. He's that that little five percent at the end. That that little five percent at the end, guys, for captain leadership. That kind of you kind of do have to go to historical stuff. This is all recent ability, recent ability, recent ability, recent ability. All these good, good, good. Like all of these, all of these are very good for James. He's one of the better. Op he's the best op IGL right now. Definitely the best op IGL right now. Like he's better than Kadian. He's better than Fallen. He's like historically, he might be the he might be one of the best ever. Really, he really might be. Um, and Captain, man, he's actually a sick Captain. He's so stoic. He couldn't get Mirror to get out of his head though. But I think Mirror's like the problem more than uh this. He's not. I think Mirror's bad at that stuff for himself because everybody else was pretty nicely focused. James is at a minimum here. He is at a minimum above uh I didn't want to use this category. A plus. A plus. A plus, James. You're A plus actually right now. You would have made it. You would have made it to the quarterfinals of the major. You would have had a great chance to beat Mouse on stage. I wouldn't have had you as the favorites. But you've shown that you can lead people on a stage. He could have he could have actually won the major if that thing didn't happen. I hate that history has to be written like this now. That he didn't even make it to the playoffs of this major. But we know why that is. It's the biggest asterisk I have seen since Olaf boost. Okay? I do not know a single, single case of it being this ridiculous. I think that they would... I actually feel like if it's Maus and Jame head-to-head, -head, I actually think Mao. I think Jame... Would be. I actually think this. I actually you know what. I have to put Jam A plus as the fourth in game leader right now. I actually have to have that. Okay. I think they could have beat Mouse because if the if the stage nerves were as bad as they were for Mouse at both Katowice and at this event, VP would have won. VP would have won, for sure. They would have won. Actually, you know what? What's crazy? It might have changed the. It might have changed the seating. It actually might have changed the seating. Um, holy crap! I actually am. I have to go deeper. We have to go deeper. What would have happened in the legend stage if, v if VP won this game versus G2? How would this affect the playoffs? Click that. So there. And then VP would have played. Oh, no. Why is it not continuing from the last thing? It's supposed to continue it. No, no, no. Choose. I... Oh, VP would have played Mouse. Yeah, they still would have played him. Okay, it's right there. It was there. My bad. So if... So if we re rewrote history and VP beat G2, they would have still played Maus. They could have won that. Then they would have played Eternal Fire or Navi. Oh my god. Oh my god. They might have won that. We know that FaZe won that. We know that Vitality won that. Wait, what? Why is it in the 1-1 phase here? Oh wait, no. Okay, they could have beat Navi. Would they have beat Vitality though? Hmm. <sighs> I don't know if they would have been Vitality. I don't know if they would have been Vitality. Uh, they would have. They could have got to the finals though, because they beat Navi before. They could have. He could have reached the grand finals. Oh wait, yeah, phase B, phase one. Oh yeah, you're right. It's phase versus VP in the grand finals. I don't even know why I did. Okay, it would have been phase VP in the grands. Oh my god. Oh, I would have loved that major. I would have loved that grand final so much. It would have been so cool. Oh, it would have been so cool. Oh, no. We're robbed of this. We were robbed of this. This could have been it. 
We could have seen this happen. Oh, this would have been crazy. Oh, I because they beat Navi at the RMR2 in a BO3. I think VP holds their nerve versus Mouse. I think they beat Navi as they did at the RMR. And I think that phase, phase the VP. I don't know. My I, my hands are tied. My hands are tied. Am I forgetting Anubis v G2? That shouldn't have even happened. It shouldn't have even happened. I'm not forgetting it at all. I'm not forgetting. I'm not forgetting Anubis versus G2 because VP were in a messed up state because they the game robbed them. The game literally robbed them. Have you ever been? Have you ever? By the way, this is not. Maybe maybe let's not let's not uh let's not even uh. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to trigger anybody. So tr trigger warning. Trigger warning right here. Um, if you've been the victim of crime, of like vi violent crime, but have think about it like this: Have you ever been just literally robbed? Someone robbed you, and you just said immediately after, immediately after all that hard-earned money, all the jewelry, everything, you just lost it, and someone said, and someone said, "Dude, bro, just work, <laughs> just work and make the money back right now. <laughs> just make the money back right now." Oh, you were robbed? <laughs> Too bad. You just work, work harder. That's exactly what that's like. That's exactly like what's like. You you put yourself in that position, and it's like everything you work towards to, you were robbed in that moment. Ha <laughs> ha, just grind as hard, bro. Like, no. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? It's just, you just, just work harder again. Just work harder. Okay. James A+. Plus. Boom. James A+. Plus. Apex. Apex. I actually feel weirdly bad for Apex at this major. Uh, you, you were, you, you vouched for Zaiwu, you vouched for everybody on your team, and in some ways, Apex didn't call that badly against FaZe. I feel like, I mean, you won Vertigo. I think the one thing that's a little bit weird, let me just, let me get this out there. When Kerrigan led it through versus Vitality, felt like you were probably pushing it a little bit there. You still won the, you still won, which is why I give Kerrigan S tier for sure, uh, which is obviously results-oriented, but like, who... Okay, let's just move move on from that. I'm not gonna have str I'm not gonna fight straw man arguments that I'm creating. Um, Apex lately has been mm, questionable, questionable. Cato bombed out completely. Uh, we know Zywu doesn't perform well at Cato because the air quality is terrible. But uh, we uh, we do have to take into account. Okay, he, he beat he beat Cloud9 and they slaughtered them. They slaughtered them. A lot of that was based off of flames, good game planning, good veto worked their way. Everything seemed to work their way. They they actually, you know what? Apex is very good. I, I Apex Apex right now, mm, the cattle performance is a little bit of a hit. I I want. I'll say this. If we memory hold Cato, things would change. Obviously, here things would be very different. But uh he's he's in. He's in a high tier. He's in a high tier. The minimum you would put him at is A. He beat Boomich, but he has much better players than Boomich. He has an opera. Wasn't able to rally the troops despite having... He won a lot lately. They won the Fall Finals, the World Finals, which I'm kind of selectively keeping in this discussion. He's not S right now. It's just, is he above or beneath Big Boom? Actually, you know what's crazy about this? I'm going to have to fix this. Um... I'm writing Boomich as the third highest because if he had an opera, I'm saying this would happen. Well, I know what James' team would be, and I know that, but it's another hypothetical. What's annoying about this is they're actually, I'm working off of two hypotheticals right now to keep Jame and Boomich right here. Because the hypothetical is they do get to play the, the quarterfinals versus Mouse. They do get to beat them. They do get to beat Navi, and then they would have been a grand finalist again. And then he probably would have, if he had done that, I think he's just S tier again, by the way. If it all happened. So I, I guess the hypothetical, and because it's that, only keeps him at A plus tier. But Apex, we got to see it all. We got to see it all. I feel like... Uh, he said Zywu was healthy by the time playoffs started. And so, I'm going to be putting Apex above Shuhei. I'm going to be putting him there. Uh, let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about what we're looking at here now with this upper echelon, though. The upper echelon of in-game leaders... This went wrong when they got to Inferno versus FaZe. They they lost on Inferno. And when I think of that matchup, this is how it went. Vitality left an overpass and Inferno. They won their map pick as they should have. They lost really badly on Nuke. I felt like the, I thought Vitality would do better on Nuke actually. And 
in some ways actually I don't I think I think actually right now what's weird about Apex is that there's a lack of consistency from some of his players not named Zywu. Um so but but the thing is that like I think that the the tools that Apex is working with are so strong that he should be achieving top 4 finishes at every event bar none. I'm going to be leaving Apex exactly where I have him right now because I've seen him I've seen him be a better leader on big stages very more often, which is kind of that 5% thing. So I'm keeping him above Shuhei, even though he bombed out of Kato. I haven't seen his team just flat out crumble on the big stages in the same fashion. It's kind of like weird, weird things seem to affect Vitality. It's almost like they're unlucky in a weird way, even though Jame is the most unlucky here, by the way. Unluckiest, unluckiest by far. And uh, I don't really see, don't really see a world where I can put him any higher, actually. With the tools that they're working with, like, Vitality was always supposed to beat Cloud9. That's why, in this head-to-head, -head, I don't really see it as, like, an Apex v, v Boomage, because it's like, dude, you had you had an opper, and you had two guys that were just playing out of their mind individually. And I, that's part of this. Um, Shuhei with Vitality goes to the final? Wow, that's kind of crazy. I don't think I can say that for sure. Uh, I think Shuhei might be, you know what, if I kind of go like this, go back to this, calling, I think actually Shuhei might be better at live reads than Apex. I think he might beat him there. In in-game ability, they're very similar. I think, I, I think Apex is just lightly better because the problem is that one reason I would actually dock them lightly both is because they both have to play these rotator high impact CT positions. They play like... Shuhei plays connector on Mirage. Apex also plays a middle position on on for for Vitality here. It's kind of a it's a little bit it doesn't feel great to cuz their 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 in-game ability above replacement if you go position for position isn't that great. Uh like let me think of the other See the other positions like they don't play ancient on Nuke on Nuke Apex plays does he play outside? Like that's actually not a good position for him at all. Like I mean, as in, as in, as as in, he's okay at playing it. But my God, why is he playing there? Uh, overpass. I think they play the same spot outside or B rotator. So that's a little weird. Uh, for I'm I'm okay. I'm just gonna leave it like this, guys. I'm gonna leave it like this. I don't want to get too hung up on these things. I want I don't want to get too hung up on it. Um. I, I'm gonna put Cadian. I'm putting a Cadian. I'll edit it. Um, and then I've got Maj Major. Um, I, I'm not gonna be as harsh as Thorin, but there are a couple things that are a little bit revealing when you think about Major Major and his run. Um, I'm not. I'm not gonna like. What's weird about it is that. I'll bring this up. Major as an individual played very very well at the at the event, and I didn't really see that coming. But looking at his stats at the event, guys, what the hell? What the hell were they working with here? This was his his stats at the event. So in the in the win above replacement thing, Madger might top the charts right now. He's he was absurd. He was absurdly good. Very very limited uh, take right there because actually at the other stage he was bad. <laughs> He was literally bad. Uh, he was a hindrance to them. So it's very... So it kind of just evens out. Kind of just evens out. But when we look at the wins, you took down VP. Took down FaZe. Lost to Mouse. Beat Vitality. Kind of weird. Kind of very weird, actually. Kind of absurdly weird. I I actually think I'm not putting him C tier because I don't think the players he has are as good as Hooksies. Um and yet they he got to the quarterfinals of the major and had some he took some pretty big teams down and route to it. So he is definitely to me he is B tier. I as an individual performer, he's actually not bad. I 
I I want I'm going to put him above Glaive today. I c c I think this, guys. I've been watch I mean I watched a lot of Eternal Fire and I just think that there's a level of cohesion with this team right now. It's hard for me to pinpoint who is delivering that. Who is really pushing it? Who is really pushing that? But I'm going to put Madra right there. I'm putting him above ZTR, I'm putting him above Glaive. I think the mm, eek 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 eek, eek. Uh, it's it's hard for me to mm, you know what I'll put him right here I'll put him top of B I'll put him top of B made it to the quarterfinals of a major you actually played really well uh, I I can tell on a few maps that they really coordinated um, overpass their maybe their T sides actually on overpass weren't that good but their CT but vertigo actually you know what no it's a little lower it's a little lower this is the guy i'm really torn about because i've watched so much eternal fire and i try to even think of win conditions for this team let me look at win rate for this team on the major um t side win rate second best oh my god they had the second best t side second best t side at the major um Oh my god. Uh uh Yeah. I'm definitely putting him here. Is he at Biguzera or Chopper level? So let me just let me get this straight. These are my major playoff IGLs. Grand finalist S tier. Quarter finalists, A plus. Quarter finalists, A plus. Semi finalists, A plus. So that's five of them. Quarter finalists, A. One, two, three, four, five, six. Quarter finalists, B. And quarter finalists, C. I feel like this is actually pretty fair. I feel like this is pretty fair. It's kind of like. I can't put him A. I can't put him A. I can't put him A, can I? No, I'm settled on that. That's B. There we go. Boom. Semi-finalist. Semi-finalist for Hooksy, you're right. But last but lot not least, last but a lot not least, Kadian. Um, I'm going off of recent form. Uh, Liquid's been abysmal. They have been horrible to watch. Uh, current form is terrible. Um, this team didn't make it through the arm arm. They lost the complexity. They almost got. They almost got there. They almost got there. As an individual, Kadian's been really bad too. And if he's your opera, that's really really bad. Uh, so that's tough. That's very tough. That is not good. So current form for Kadian, Liquid have not really shown me anything with this lineup. They have not put anything together, and. Um, Guys, last, I mean, this year, this is current form. This is current form, guys. Kadian. They got the replay. They didn't even make it to Chengdu officially. They actually got there because they got a random. Guys, these are his RMR stats, okay? This is his RMR stats. 1.02. Barely better than Skulls and Yakindar, who I have been flaming. And that's your opera! That's your opper. He didn't even farm boss. Lost to Furia and uh. Guys, there's nothing to say here. There's one answer right now. Like he's got to he's got to dig himself out of a huge hole. Guys, also performance at the showdown. Lost to Saw was horrible. Was really bad. He played one good map here, but was terrible in the others. Like, if I'm being fair, if I'm being fair about this, guys, there's only one. Like, I can't, I can't put him really anywhere else. It's it is what it is. Like, he lost to Art. He lost to Art with a team that many people thought was. This was supposed to be a super team. This was supposed to be a super team. It's very tough. It's very, very tough right now to look at anything that Liquid have done with Kadian, which I'll, okay, I'm going to bring it up. 
Again, Liquid, HLTV. Let's look at some of these results, guys. It ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. They lost 1-2 to in the showdown. They lost to Complexity. They lost to Furia. They lost to Nouns in this one, and they made it through this closed qualifier to make it to Dallas. Oof, guys, they, they and then in the spring groups, yeah, okay, they they beat Spirit, but that wasn't Spirit. That wasn't Spirit. Remember, remember, that was like two stand-ins. They beat Gamer Legion. This is their year. That's their year right there. Losing this is okay. If I'm gonna be as hard, like I wanted from Cato to put Snappy into, I would have put if it was Cato practically like practically alone, Snappy'd be up here. He'd be right there. It's not. The RMR matters. The RMR matters, and he played in an easier RMR. Sure, he had to play Furia and Complexity, but neither of those teams, as we know, are good. They are not good teams right now. They're not elite. They're not elite. I'd say Complexity is good. Furia is not good. Furia is verifiably bad. Um, <sighs> bottom of D. Bottom of D. Bottom of D. Bottom of D. Uh, reasons for this also are that I don't think I, I, his his individual play is so bad. His individual play is so bad for where is that? Um, your kitty and your time on liquid does count. This is supposed to be a super team. Uh, blame it if blame if we're here, he would be pretty low too. But I'm not gonna I'm not just gonna finish the video on that one. Okay, uh, Kadian. There is a road to redemption after the failing with Liquid thus far in the first half of this year, first first third of this year. After the failing with Liquid in the first third of this year, seems like they're keeping the gang together. Doesn't seem like they're changing anything. There's a lot to work on. You're going through easier qualifiers. You are playing teams like Complexity and Furia at best for spots in your region. You should be qualifying for everything. You should have chances at these events. You got a lifeline. You made it to Dallas over nouns. You made it to Chengdu because they actually took out complexity. They actually put you guys in. You have chances to prove yourself now. But as of right now, you're in the D. You're in the D tier. You did not make it to the major through what was supposed to be one of the easier regions. Obviously, we saw some overperformances by America's teams. But that's where he is right now. It's recent form. This is a recent form form tier list for in-game leaders and i am using this rubric again 50 percent calling the calling for liquid has not been great it's been okay veto game planning with the coach coach combo i think if anything zeus might be dragging him down in-game ability very bad and leadership um didn't make it even through the rmr you know like this is bad it's all very bad it's all looking bad okay guys that's my tier list. I'm going to be chopping this up, putting it to to YouTube so you can watch it back. And uh, thank you guys. That's, um, I'm going to, let's see. What am I going to do next time? There we go. Who's the last guy? Uh, not relevant to this discussion. So that's it. That's a tier list. I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'll review the tier list right now. I'm going to review this tier list right now. S tier, Kerrigan, Alexi B. I think this is totally fair. We got we got two of the best in-game leaders right there. A plus tier. All of these guys should have at least been in the quarterfinals of the major. And I say should have because of obviously what happened to Jame and VP in the in the 2-2 game. I think the, the A tier, I also think is very fair. Chopper, he's playing with some of the best pieces in the world right now. He's playing with a donk that is absurd. He's playing with a Shiro that's very good. But royally screwed the veto, royally screwed the veto with with um, with uh, their game versus Kerrigan, and I had to dock him points. I had to dock him points because you had because another thing about Chopper guys and why I am not putting him in the A plus tier. It's like wait wait a second. I thought you're rating the cattle performance highly. Donk was the best player ever at a prestige event. He is the highest rated player at any prestige event in all of time. Okay, ever since rating 2.0 came out, no one has ever had a higher rating than Donk. You were not going to lose that unless you tried. Okay, like you had to actively work against the t that team to lose that tournament. I think that almost every every IGL in here could have done something with that those pieces there. I really do. And so, uh, in a way, I know that Ch what Chopper's done and the consistency that he's shown um, 
has made me rate him highly, but that single veto flaw, if I'm thinking of things like this, is, um, let me, if I'm thinking of the veto in the, in the, where'd it go? Okay. If I'm thinking of the veto, it's a, it was a bad veto. You played your sixth best map against a team where you had no info on them. That's, 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 we're getting more sample size. We're getting a greater sample size from Trump from Chopper, and and we're seeing the propensity to make mistakes. If if Chopper had Blade instead of Haley, they might have won the major. They probably would have won the major. Biguzera, this guy's probably next up and coming. What he did with that with that pain lineup is absurd, absurd. He got that pain lineup where nobody knows any of those people. Other, I mean, you do. You might you might know some of them. But with his own ability to, to this level. Major, really nice run with Eternal Fire. I think the cohesion with this team has been really nice. In fact, you know what? One thing is that win above replacement. What was Eternal Fire like when they didn't have Major? They were just they were just twiddling their thumbs waiting for Major to come back, basically. Uh, waiting for them to re rethink their, their picks. Blitz. I, I think Mongols has just shown a great level of counter strike through and through, and uh, you never really they, they're they're becoming a, a slowly scary team and working in very tough conditions to become competitive at, on the world stage. JT, uh, decidedly the best in game leader in the Americas right now, better than Cadian, better than Art. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Biggest Era, Biggest Era might be better now. Um, because Era might be better, but I guess it would be fun to see them play against. Oh no, wait! But JT actually beat Biggest Era. He actually beat him, but he had Elise going God mode. Elise went God mode, and for that reason, I like part of in-game leading is the in-game and your ability in-game too. And JT is worse than Biggest Era because just it's just better. I almost think like if you were to go purely off of calling alone, you might even rate these guys neck and neck, but then the boost from the rubric, yeah, goes up. Um, Kicksan. Probably a guy next up. I feel like he's getting a big boost because of the IG, uh, the coaches he's working with, though. ZTR, another guy that's really up and coming, making a team that's... Wow, he's making Swedish CS proud again. Glaive, not the performance you would have wanted to see at the Major, but qualifying for the Major and having a deep run at Kata was very impressive. Hooksy, monumental flaws in the veto. I don't care if Taz is doing it because why is Taz doing it? Why is your new coach doing your vetoes and why are you not saying a word? That's just, that's an indictment on you. That's not good. That's not like, oh, haha, we got the blame off Hooksy, guys. <laughs> it's like, no, you should be part of that. You should be a big part of that. If anything, they should have said, that, that's why it's like such a bold-faced lie when G2 comes out with information that's like that. That's like, I take responsibility for the veto. It's like, no, 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 no. It never should have been a one-on-one. -on -one. It never should have been you over him, and that's it. It should have been, let's at least talk in, in tandem, and it should have been a group decision. Like, that's why it's like, why, why do you have to like, you have to, people always, when people are caught in a lie, they always stretch what they, what they think happened to the point where it's almost like, why are you ex over explaining it? Why are you even over explaining it? But they even, they released that thing because of, because of all the, f the flack that they got on social media. Um, Snappy, the RMR thing really kicked him in the ass. Mm, Muterus, I think Saw's just kind of like a meddling team right now in, uh. Europe and I feel like it's partially due to their players popping off and maybe maybe due to like decent structure. Vinny helped that Imperial team really overperform. Patty ecstatic also exceeded expectations. Snacks, uh I don't know, they're changing a lot with Gamer Legion and they didn't really they didn't really look that I mean, they were okay in the major, and it's kind of hard to grade him, and I think they would have done better had they known they were going to the major earlier, but I'm just grading off of what I saw. Uh, Neck is this legacy team overperform, but it still wasn't like that pretty. And also in the America's armor, they look pretty bad. I, I mean, that's what that's almost what I watched more of is them in the America's armor, where I was like, how the hell does this team even make it? There's already a thread flaming the list. Fallen, yeah, no, okay, um, not that great. Seized, seized, uh, yeah, nine pandas. I mean, I actually thought they were a little better than I thought, but then they were kind of worse than I thought again. Um, but they also didn't get to play the major, so that's a little unfair. Exit underperformed at the RMR with the team he had. Alex, God, I don't know what to think still. Um, 
uh davi g probably one of the probably one of the worst teams to watch but at least he made it to the major kadian failing spectacularly right now with a with a super team device it's not really an igl yet i can't really put you there nafany man boom i mean bet boom has just been god awful ever since sydney and uh furia art actively working against his team's success since calling the worst counter-strike in the world um There we go. That's it. As always, being toxic is a choice. Okay. All right. I'll stay on stream for a little bit longer, but that's how I'm ending the YouTube video. Um, because people are saying that people are saying stuff already on the forums. Let me read what you guys are saying first. Complexity is whether a leech pop off and if the hells are going to be bought, which I think we all have secretly. Um, wonderful. Um... Baha Blasen, you're not um, scaling off your own rubric. Hooksy can't be rated C. Fakes your list, and here's submitting short stuff. What? Uh, C surprised me wasn't bad actually. I mean, yeah, it's. I mean, I think I would probably have gotten to rate him here if he got to play the major. There's a, okay, here's the IGL tier list thread. Okay, I see it. What is wrong with it? What's, I actually, I need to know, I actually am curious, I'm on a right. I'm taking the bait. I'm taking his bait. Which are the biggest changes you would make? I'm reading based off of current form, of 2024 form very very slight move ups move downs based off of historical data but mo but almost entirely uh, i'm not even gonna write that i'm just gonna write this it's too many words for someone to comprehend what are the biggest changes you'd make it's like looking at the it's looking at their ages currently so i'd say the list is accurate I'm I'm really curious what he doesn't like. Can you upload this two hour tier list as a three thirty second short? I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not Okay, guys, what okay, I'm curious about like what you guys would do. Um I, I explained my whole thing. I explained the whole thing in two hours. I explained the entire thing. I explained it for two hours, Baja Blast, and you can go back and look. But what what do you what do you now annoying is subjective, but Maui low knowledge like I, I don't know. Hooksy S tier. I love Apex they are atrocious right now. Maui big beta low knowledge annoying. It's Cadian's alt. I'm just curious what 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 do you Hmm. Why the hell are we hating on Apex? Apex have such a bad roster and they are overachieving so hard since doing a good job. Hmm. Shuhei S tier. I can't put Shuhei S tier when your team has crumbled on stages twice in a row. Kixan A tier. I've never seen. I, that, that just this just hasn't been proven at all. That just hasn't been proven. Uh, they, they they overperformed at the major. They were the pleasant surprise of the opening stage. I had them to make it through to the playoffs, and they didn't. They didn't make it even to the playoffs. They can't can't be. I mean. If he made it to A tier, like look at the t the pieces that he has. Also, the reason I don't put Kicksand super high is he's working with one of the best coaches in the in the whole scene right now. Some people just want their favorite team's IGL to be higher. That's it. Yeah, I think that really is. Shuhei is A. I think that's the only change I make. A instead of A plus. Yeah, I think the thing is that I am kind of using a little bit more with historical stuff. Like I maybe I maybe like the blurring of lines here is that the blurring of lines here is that. I am trying to make this just a 2024 list so far, but if that were the case, you maybe would have to say, okay, Apex is a little lower, and then Chopper is a little higher, and then, but like, Shuhei made it to top four at Kato. He made it to the playoffs of the of this event. Uh, in the group stage, he's a great in-game leader, but I can't put him in S, even though his calling is fantastic. His calling, in fact, I think this. 
I think I think Shuhei's mid rounding is better than Apex's. It might even be better than um, Boomich's and James sometimes. But like on a on a stage right now, he's he's. It almost feels like his nerves or whatever are there. It's just that everybody on the team is falling off such a hard cliff right now on stage for two events in a row that it's very hard as a leader and with that captain ability to rate him that highly. And I know that at Gamer Legion was able to do well. I'm kind of including that a little less. I think major A tier would be fair. Turk just has been a mess for the longest time. It's no small feat. Mm. I think Wykadia has been slowly getting better and better. Okay, yeah, Major being up one. one. I thought I kind of had him like this. I kind of had him like this. I'd say top of B tier. This is ordered, by the way. This is all order. This is 100% ordered. I'm just using tiers to make it more readable. Okay. But who would you pick right now as an IGL to start a team with? Um, I, I kind of feel like that's a that's a tough question because obviously I'd want one of my S tier IGLs for sure. But if you're saying like, oh, involving age, well, maybe Shuhei, just because I feel like. Yeah, maybe maybe Shuhei just because of his he's twenty one. But if I don't care about that, I obviously want Kerrigan or Alexi. There, that's e it's easy. Uh, Xantros was over for Horming Heart. He's no, he's been good. He's been good. Xantros has been really good. Do you think Glaive would be better on G two than Hooksy right now? Mm. I think that's what I'm indicating. I think that's what I'm indicating with this tier list. I don't I don't know. I mean, that's a that's a that's an interesting one for one. That's a really interesting one for one. I'll say that. Uh, mm, ah, I don't know. I actually don't know. That's a tough one. They're like, I, I barely rate Glaive higher than Hooksy right now. The reason I don't like Hooksy is because of these like veto problems at the major. I've seen so many. You're like, they're trying to win through bad vetoes in my eyes. And and I, I know I'm not the only person that thinks this. Yanko thinks this too. What is it? I mean, like, I'll take, yeah, I think I'll take Glaive. I'll take Glaive right now. I think he just know, would know how to play, like, veto to his strengths a little bit better. Yeah, you won't say that on stream. Wow, you get free spot. What? Say what on stream? I wouldn't go with Kerrigan to start a team right now. Age uh, regardless, feel like off of phase, he would be lost. No, what? He's showing so many good teams. Yeah, let's not say that in here. Um, we will have a major. Didn't Taz post on Twitter? Yes, but Taz Taz posting on Twitter that it's his vetoes is also an indictment on like. It's an indictment on Hooksy. If Hooks if Hooksy has consecutively in two majors, guys, with the Fnatic veto at Paris and the vetoes here in in Copenhagen what's the like does he just have the shittiest coaches ever is Hooksy is Hooksy working through having the worst coaches consecutively in the space guys like is it Swanee doing the the vetoes in Paris is it Taz doing the vetoes in Copenhagen why do we why are these guys trying to like give passes and yeah also Hooksy okay Hooksy lost to Gamer Legion in the Rio RMR I'm not I'm not I'm not using that that much context guys all right cool Thank you guys so much. As always, being toxic is a choice.